Okay, so today we get to finally make our Anuksuks. We've been talking about these for a while. We learned about you, learned about them in social studies. We've made a collage version and we finally get to make our 3D sculptural Anuksuk, which is good because in the real world, they're made out of rock and they would be three-dimensional and sculptural. So here's some examples that I've made over the years. These are glazed, this is a black glaze. This is clear and some green, kind of to make it look mossy. And this is a cute little bitty one that hasn't been glazed yet. This is what the clay will look like after it's fired. And you can hear, it's ceramic, it's been fired. So what we're gonna start with today is a chunk of clay. Okay, it's nice and soft and plastic because it's got a lot of water in it. And basically, we're just gonna imitate these nice organic shapes. This is a fun project, it's pretty easy to get good results with. So I like to make a base, so I'm just pulling off some clay there, and it's already a nice organic shape. I'm just gonna, I'm not pounding, you shouldn't hear me thumping against the table here, I'm just pushing it down, kind of making a nice base. Those little cracks and things like this, we don't have to smooth them out now because they just kind of look naturally like rock. And kind of shape it by patting it a little bit. And it's nice to have a base that makes them sturdier and it makes them a nice heavy bottom so they balance better. And it's a perfect way to be able to put your name on the bottom so we know who's our who's, which is always important. You can have kind of a more round base or you can make one that's a little bit more like a rectangle. That's kind of what this one has right now. So I've got a little base. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull off some of these pieces like this. I'm just gonna pull some random parts off and we're gonna kind of shape them into those rock shapes. So you can kind of shape them. I kind of just tap. You can use the table to tap them a little bit and shape them and decide if they're gonna be upright. Some different shapes and sizes. You get a big piece of clay, so if you make one larger one and you have leftover, you can make a little one. This one does actually have my initials on there. Okay, so I'm just gonna shape a few here. And I'm gonna make mine kind of a human shape, so I'm thinking these will be the legs. Now, one of the things I teach over and over again is when clay is wet, it will stick. It'll hold together. But it's the stickiness is the water, and the water has to dry before we fire it. So even though it's sticking now, it won't stay that way. So this is a really easy thing to do for us today. We're gonna to kind of slip and score at the same time. I have a little bit of water, just enough to get this toothbrush wet. Wow, it's really stiff too. It's definitely got some old clay on there. So I'm just gonna kind of bend that. So toothbrush works really well because it's got these nice kind of sharp bristles. I'm just putting the water that's on the toothbrush here. And I'm gonna also kind of just do this. And what's happening is the water's making it it's kind of slippery. That's the slip. And the toothbrush bristle is creating the texture and that's gonna help these lock into place. So I'm kind of push and kind of wiggle that down. I can kind of seal that edge with my finger a little bit. So if these are my two legs, I've got that there that need to create that texture. I hope you can see that. I'm gonna kind of push. I'm gonna make sure I leave a little space between these. I think that'll look more interesting. So mine's kind of flat that way, but it's much more the shape is uh, much more rounded from this direction. So now I'm gonna try and think about <clears throat> kind of a, that crossbar. So I've got these legs with a little space. Again, I'm just gonna kind of pat and round it. I don't wanna use a lot of water if I don't have to. I'm really gonna save that water and the toothbrush for when I'm joining things together. People tend to wanna to smooth them out, but sometimes this gets really messy. And kind of tap it and shape it till I get a shape that I like. Make sure it goes all the way across. Looks like a nice lintel on a stone hedge piece right now. Okay. <clears throat> and you're still going to need to focus on balance. If I make something super top heavy, like this still can fall over. So balance is a big important part of sculpture. And even though we have kind of a little sticky kind of 
effect happening with our slip and our scoring, it won't work if I'm, if I'm trying to make something like this. It's not going to stick in balance. So now I'm going to press this on. I'm going to kind of hold the bottom so I can push down a little bit without crushing it. So if I'm careful, I can kind of show you I've got that kind of a shape now. And I can feel that if I make these bottom pieces too thin, I'm going to lose my balance. So now I'm going to think about <clears throat> adding a couple more pieces. Decide if I want to just have it be. It doesn't have to represent a figure. It could just be a rock stack. These two are very similar. I'm not sure if I like that or not. I'm going to leave it there and just see what's happening and if I like it. Maybe make something a little bit more rounded like for the head. And I still want it to look like a rock. I don't want it to look too perfectly round. Hmm. Yeah, it's not bad. Maybe offset it. A little off center. So I can kind of play around with it and see how I like it. Yeah, maybe I'll have it offset because remember we talked about in class and in social studies how they point in the direction you want to go. So if I line it up even like that, we don't really get that directional sense. So I'm going to go like that so it's pointing in one direction. So now that I've decided I like those shapes, I have to go ahead and kind of be careful. I don't want to crush what's underneath there, so I'm kind of holding it gently, creating that texture and that little bit of water so it's a little bit of slip. And I'm going to do the same on here. Toothbrush works really well for this. I'm going to hold it. I'm holding underneath so I can push and not crush what's happening below the, the legs. I'm kind of squeezing that together so it'll join nicely. So now it looks like this. And I can kind of smooth out places where it's gotten water, slip, something sticking out that I don't like. Um, it's soft now because it's wet, but anything that's kind of, you know, a little crumbles and things like this, when they're fired and they're hard like this, that can be very sharp. So you want to smooth those down. And then I'm going to put my head here. So I'm going to do my slip and score in one swift motion with my toothbrush. Again, at both surfaces. I'm just going to kind of push it, kind of wiggle it a little bit, push it down. Right, so here's my Inuk Sook. You can kind of see the slip oozing out there. That's a good sign. Make sure, see, it wants to kind of fall back and forth. That balance is key. And then I have this tool here. You can use it to just put your, you know, if you're careful, you can put it on the bottom or you can put them on the top. And a nice thing, because I will say, Clay are, tend to be the projects that people keep for a long time, so you might want to find a spot. Okay, see how this doesn't want to balance here. And put the year. Put 2019 because you might have this on a shelf in your house, and in a, you know, five, ten years you'll look back and be like, wow, this is that piece of clay that I made when I was learning about the nooks, nooks in the Arctic, and I made it in 2019. Um, another thing I do sometimes if I'm having trouble with balance, I can make some little support pebbles. So I could put like a little pebble at the base here and kind of reinforce something. A little stack of rocks. I've kind of got some of that happening here. I just did them for decoration. But if you have something that's leaning one way or another, that's another way to kind of reinforce that. Build that up a little bit. All right, so at this point, we'll be setting these off to the side and letting them dry and they'll get fired in the kiln. And if you have leftover clay, you can make another smaller version. Or you can make what you'd like. I'm going to let people do that with their leftover clay. But make sure when you're joining pieces, remember, when it's smooth, it will stick now. But when that dries out and has to go in the kiln, it's going to fall right apart. So you want to make sure whatever you're joining together, you're going to add a little texture and a little water and create that
clay glue, both surfaces. And then they will stay together. All right, let's start making.